Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Route 5. Fried chicken. No, oh. You're interrupting the intro. <laughs> this is Kentucky Route 5, and as you now know due to that interrupted intro, uh, I am not joined by our usual, my usual co-host, Chris. We, I am joined by my special guest, Lizzie. Say, say hi. To the side oh, of the hey, what's up? There you go. All right, see, we'll, 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 get, we'll get a good video out of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. we're already starting off pretty poorly because this is not Kentucky Fried Chicken, and I am entirely disappointed. Oh, um, let me just, you know, send you and some Uber Eats real quick. That'd be, that'd be great, actually. I'm not going to. <laughs> that's good. All right, well, today, on today's episode of Kentucky Route 5, the show, it's the same as it always is. Today, we're going to talk about five of our favorite things, respectfully. I have five, Lizzie brought five. Today, we're talking about Disney animated movies. I, I honestly, you know, as you can see in her background there, I might have brought in an expert. She might be a Disney fan. You know, there might be, you know, there's a chance. There's a chance that she might know what she's talking about when it comes to Disney. If you disagree with her list, you know, uh, take it out on her, not you're me. Wrong. It's not my fault. No, you're just wrong. Just don't oh. even bother because okay. you're wrong. All right. Well, um, Lizzie, let, let's you know. Let's start off here. Let's start off with your number five. Let's see. Let's see what people think about your list. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Important note: when I made my list, I like, I didn't just focus on the ones, the movies that I love because obviously there are like some favorites that are great to me, but all around aren't, like, the maybe the best movies out there. So I kind of focused on, like, overall, like, storyline. Um, I tried not to let soundtrack play, like, a huge part in it, because honestly, then it would just be Lion King, Lion King, Lion King, King Lion King, you know? Um, so, yeah, my number five is Tarzan. So, I love Tarzan. Um... Got that Phil Collins soundtrack. I know you said you didn't bring the soundtrack in, but I don't know. I mean, Phil Collins. You're right. You're <laughs> right. I do enjoy the tar the Tarzan soundtrack, but it's not like it wasn't the choosing like the the factor that made me choose. This, okay. I would argue, technically um, speaking, it's probably the best music in most Disney movies because Phil Collins is an actual musician. <laughs> I mean, but I didn't take that into consideration. <laughs> I don't disagree, but. I'm just looking at the overall storyline. Fair, fair enough. So, I just I just love the whole story of Tarzan, and honestly, like, as a little girl, I wanted to be Jane, because who didn't? I, um, I, I did, as well, so I understand. Exactly, like, who, honestly, everyone wants to be Jane, like, she's, I mean, she's in yellow, and she looks gorgeous, the goals, obviously. So, yeah. Also, the, the little, um, elephant, you know, is this water sanitary? That was my really bad. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I know. I know there was an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, obviously she made the whole movie, so we'll, we'll just leave it. At that. Um, so yeah, that's my number five. All right, so that's a res I feel like that's a respectful <laughs> number five. No one's gonna question you on that one. Have I seen your list? Will people question you on some of the other ones? We'll see. <laughs> what? Oh nah, my! I'm okay, just I'm ready messing for this with you. Okay. <laughs> Here's my number five, a, a classic. I mean, not really. It's definitely one of the more recent movies on this list, on my list at least. I have Emperor's New Groove. I will say I almost picked that one, and then I was like, you know, no, I I got my solid. Song. That's fair. I mean, Emperor's New Groove. It's just it's a you know it's a fun movie. You got you know. You got Cusco, he's he's hilarious, you know, he you, got, you, you, get, you can't go wrong when you cast David Spade. Okay, I mean, you probably could, but, like, it works. <laughs> I'm imagining David Spade as, like, Elsa. <laughs> I mean, I'd watch, I'd probably, I'd, hey, if David Spade played Elsa, Frozen might have made my list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that, I get that, that's fair. <laughs> But yeah, um, Emperor's New Groove, it's a, it's a great movie, uh, it's got a great, you know, story, message, you know, you got a character, you know, he starts off as a real big jerk, and, you know, he ends up getting a heart by the end, that's, you know, can't go wrong with that, you got some great comedy in there, you got, I mean, just, Kronk, he's, you know, peak Disney comedy, 
got his own spinoff. Movie's okay, oh, yeah. not good. But hey, he, he only got that movie because of how good he did in this movie. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, Emperor's New Groove, it's fun. It's got a lot, some great jokes. There's, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but they're there. They're great. <laughs> Pull the, the level crank. That's not one I would consider great, but hey, it's there. <laughs> I think that Disney is really losing um, a lot of potential that they have there um, of making a ride of that. Mm, that's movie. fair. I can see that. I can definitely see a ride out of that. I think that could be like, like maybe even the water, like a water ride. I think it could be really fun. Okay, just hear me out, Disney. Hire me. I'll design it. Oh. We'll, we'll work it together. <laughs> I, I don't this, think you this, have this the you know, credentials to do that. Uh, I just want to say I'm, I'm looking at the picture I have here from the you know from the DVD release poster, and you know, apparently this is the grooviest animated trip since Aladdin. So that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which okay. actually really just is a you know a really you know you know just like very damning of the disney movies that were made in between aladdin and this they were bad <laughs> there's a reason home on the range didn't make it either of our lists today i mean there is a good reason for that i will <laughs> it didn't even come into consideration really i mean it was close it was tied for sixth on mine but you know it didn't make the oh. cut <laughs> all right Let's go back over to Lizzie. Lizzie, what's your number four? Okay, so I feel like if you know me in person, this one is my only predictable um, answer. I'd argue, I'm, it, I was, as someone who knows you, I'm shocked at the placement. <laughs> Not yeah, that it made your but, list, you know, but where it's it on placed. The list. It is on the list, but it is kind of shocking if you know me in person, considering I own a bell costume. Um... That Beauty and the Beast is number four. Um, and I stand by that. Uh, uh, the soundtrack is, it's just okay. Um, I mean, it's not horrible. I, I jam to it, but I mean, that doesn't make it good. I'll admit. Whoa, you got, you got <laughs> um, like two songs. But, yeah, okay. But, hold on. The library. Like, that is my life goal right there in the movie. Like, her dishes cook and clean for her her furniture cleans well, I mean, her, her, her clothes do her clean. slaves cook and clean for her they're just trapped as dishes let's settle down here lizzie apparently your real dream um, is really owning slaves what if, what if they haven't seen that movie yet you just spoiled the whole thing for them. <laughs> sorry oh gosh, Austin, you're spoiler old. alert lizzie's actual <laughs> dream is to be a slave owner which is not acceptable <laughs> and i'm really regretting putting her on this podcast <laughs> Oh boy, oh gosh, well that's gonna get a lot of hate, okay. No, okay, they're um, indentured servants, it's a little bit yeah. better. Also, like, <laughs> okay, I'm still stuck on that slave thing, that's horrible. Sorry. Um, <laughs> but like, just Belle, like, obviously like from where she starts to where she goes, I mean like the girl power there, like that's awesome. I don't love that it's kind of, I mean, Stockholm Syndrome? Not kidding. <laughs> but if we look past that. <laughs> Just look past the little, the, the really bad <laughs> case of Stockholm Syndrome Belle definitely has. If we look past that, it's like a beautiful you know, love a good story. moral about learning to love like who, who people captain. are on the inside and what they look like. <laughs> and it, it's a bonus if they're also your captor, so like, yeah. it works out. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, yeah, that is my number four. I know you're shocked that it's not, like, at number Honestly, one. Honestly, now that we've discussed this movie, I think it's better that you have it so low, because it's questionable. Exactly. <laughs> and so, honestly, it almost didn't even make the list. And then I was like, well, it needs an honorable m mention, because, like, I dress up as Belle, like, three times a year. Sometimes I just put on my, like, my Belle dress and, like, walk around the house and clean. Like, that's how boss I am, okay? That was a hair flip, and my hair's on this side, so it didn't even make sense. So, yeah, I stand by that number four. What's your number four? My number four? What crazy? I, did, I, did I even have a number four? Yes, I do. It is the... I, I was about to call it a classic, but I don't think anyone knows about it, so it doesn't get to be a classic. But the, you know, hidden gem of the Disney archive, Oliver and Company. I will agree that it is a hidden gem and needs... Way more recognition. I, I love recognition. Oliver and Company. Oliver and Company, it's just, it's so charming. You got like a cute little kitty cat 
hanging out with a bunch of dogs. That's not supposed to happen, but it does. Right? You got, you know, a great soundtrack. I don't remember who does it, but it's some big name person who shouldn't be doing a Disney soundtrack, but they are because it's middle of the Renaissance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who does it either. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's a fun little story. You know, you got, you know, there's, there's, there's kidnap, there's, there's drama. There's some great, there's some great bops, you know, there's, <laughs> it's one of those movies I watched so much as a kid. That's why I made this list. Like I have like, I re recently about a, within the it's last year, like I, nostalgic yeah, recently within the last year, I watched it with my little brother for the first time. And just, there were so many like vivid memories where I was like, oh, I forgot how clearly I remember this scene until it happened. Cause right. I hadn't watched it in years, but just, the yeah. brain is so cool like that. You know, I just, you know, a like good, 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 good movie, you know, and I, I, unlike Lizzie, who wants to, you know, have a bunch of slaves in her house, I want, you know, some cool pets like this, you know, I'd be down to have Oliver as a pet, because that's acceptable, because he's an animal, not a human trapped as a dish. Well, that seems like the perfect segue into my number three, <laughs> you know, away from the slaves, ha ha ha. Yeah? What? Sorry, what was it? Your number okay. three? Yeah, uh, my number three is Fox and the Hound. And so I think my husband would put this at number one because he absolutely loves the movie. And of course it's good. Like, yeah, it's it's wonderful. It's number three. Um, and I think if you dislike this movie, you're just heartless. Um, Dang. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. because I don't know. It's just... Take that, viewers. That... <laughs> I have strong opinions and I'm not afraid to tell you if you ask me. You asked. Listen. You know, that's if true. You're, if you're I, I chose. Video, I chose to put you, you on this. This is my fault if I lose viewers because of it, <laughs> because you offend them by telling, saying they're heartless because they happen to not enjoy a Disney movie. Austin, Austin, if uh, if you lose those followers, um, you didn't really need them because they weren't good enough for you. Okay. No, I need all. We need all the followers we can <laughs> get. The Lizzie's opinions do not represent downtown Kentucky's. <laughs> Okay, okay, that, maybe put that as, like, a closed caption somewhere. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just, it's a heartfelt um, movie, you know, everyone, you know, sheds a little tear or two. I won't spoil it. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. I think it's kind of understated anyway. Um, and honestly, not a lot of people have seen it. Yeah. I think that's fair. I feel like it's a, it's a great um, movie. It's got a lot, it does have a lot of heart. Yeah. I'm not one of the, here's the thing, according to Lizzie, I'm not heartless. I just don't think our viewers are heartless if they happen to not enjoy this movie. It is kind of slow. I can understand if it wasn't your favorite. There. I will say it is slow. I'm not saying it has to be your favorite. I'm just saying, like, it should tug at your heart a little bit. You I should mean, be like, oh, I kind of enjoyed that. I mean, you shouldn't be like, oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with this movie. Now I'm like, take a, I want to just take, like, the anti-stance now, because I feel like you're just being offensive to our viewers. No, this movie sucks. Dogs and foxes you know, shouldn't be friends. It's forbidden. It's wrong. This movie is That's wrong. Fine. That's fine. Oliver was pretty horrible too. So, um, what's your number three? How dare you say that? That was that was Oliver <laughs> Twist in a new a new genre. That's that's art. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's honestly why I liked it because I liked Oliver Twist. So, I, and I like animals. So, I think that's honestly mm. why I like that movie. So. What's, and Fox I, and the, I didn't, what's Fox and the Hound? Nothing. There's no classic movie this is based off of. This is just two friends. Dang. It's almost like friendship should mean something. Not as much as Oliver Twist. You hear that, Chris? You hear that, Chris? Um, he thinks apparently nothing of you guys and only thinks of Oliver. So there Oliver you go. Twist is more important than friendship. Moving on to my <laughs> number three. <laughs> We got The Lion King, because once again, I like classic literature retold. <laughs> that's a solid number two. Like, that's a good answer. Here we got, here there we is... go. Time for some Hamlet. <sighs> I think it's Hamlet, right? Is that what it is? There's some, there's some classic thing it's supposed to be. Is it Hamlet? I think it's Macbeth. It's, it's Macbeth. You're right. <laughs> I don't like classic literature unless it's turned into a Disney movie, though, so... I wasn't going to say anything, but then when you, uh... I realized that I said that Hamlet felt wrong, but, you know, 
Here we are. Um, apparently, see, I know nothing about classic literature except for Oliver Twist and apparently Macbeth. You know, it's Lion King. It's great. Lion King, amazing soundtrack. I don't care what Lizzie, Lizzie says. Soundtrack is ninety percent of the reason why you watch Disney movies. She says that's not an important reason on why she picked her picks. That is probably fifty percent of why I pick most of my picks is because the soundtrack is awesome. <laughs> So, well, yeah. it is a great song. It's also I mean, a, and... a great story. You have a story of a kid who thinks he killed his dad. That's fun. <laughs> Runs away from That's home. Okay. <laughs> leaves his mother and sisters to all be tortured. Fun. There's some borderline, you know, Nazi imagery that people think is there that isn't really. But it kind of, you can see it. There's some goose-stepping. <laughs> This is just, it's a fun for the whole family. And here's the thing, you know why you know that The Lion King is good? Because Disney decided to spend way too much money to make it again. So it's obviously good, and they good wouldn't again. make a shot-for-shot shot remake. And they did, so obvi- with less yeah. heart and, you know, no emotion, because they chose to do live-action yeah. anim- live animals. <laughs> I will say... Um... Even if this hadn't been an animated movie, none of my top five would have been live action. <laughs> that's fair. <I'll> say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, it's hard to find. <laughs> Disney doesn't make a lot of good live action movies. I mean, I didn't hate a few of them, but also like the animated. I like the kid. So. The kid was a good movie, starring Bruce Willis. I don't think I've seen that, actually. I think it's Bruce Willis. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that. It's a great movie. It's on Disney+. Plus. I'll add that Hashtag to my not sponsored. To my... But we're willing to be. I'll add that to watch. But we're willing to be. I don't think Disney+. Plus. I, we're talking all about Disney. They're going to want to sponsor this. I'm talking about how great oh, yeah. their movies are. Lion King. I'm not insulting our viewers. You are. <laughs> Here are the oh, Disney+, okay. Plus execs no. that are watching... I understand why you don't like Fox and the Hound enough to remake it, but I respect that you remade Lion King, because it's art. Austin, Austin, do you remember how that movie ended? Lion King? How would you remake that? No. Fox and the Hound? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I, I, I remember, like, okay. parts of it. Okay. I don't think I don't think that would be so fam- family-friendly if we remade that, that movie in live action. They, I mean, you know how much death happens in Lion King? That is a very... I hadn't considered that. You, you know, just ignore everything I just said. It's, Scar it's is fed to the hyenas at the end of this one. Yeah, well, he deserved it. I mean, <laughs> fair, but still. It teaches kids a very a very valuable life lesson. Don't be a jerk or we'll feed you to the hyenas. Pretty much. <laughs> is this a good time to mention that I'm a preschool teacher? <laughs> Ooh, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie, what's your number two? Um, this one, okay, so when I was making my list, this honestly almost made number one, but after um, a lot of consideration, it, 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 it bumped down to number two for good reason, and you'll see later. Um, but Princess and the Frog. I, okay, I'm not going to lie, this soundtrack did play a huge part into it because I, I like... I jam to this soundtrack. I love it. Um, I think I could probably qu- quote you this whole movie uh, without, like, even seeing the pictures on the screen. Um, I don't so know yeah, if that was a uh, flex or not, but okay. <laughs> it, it was a little bit of a disappointment in myself for how many times I've yeah. seen it, but also I love it. I'm not that, that disappointed in myself. Um, I've seen but, this movie yeah, once it, and wasn't even that... I didn't really like it. Oh my gosh. I, I'm just going to keep talking so that I don't have to, like, cancel our friendship, okay? Okay, okay, so, just keep going. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, like, just the characters, I think there's a lot of thought into the characters. Um, a little lightning bug, Gus, I love him. I feel like he's, like, my soul creature. Pretty sure he's yeah. a cultural stereotype. What? The lightning bug? Isn't he? Isn't he, like, a really, like, racist depiction of, like, someone from the bayou? Or am I thinking of a different character? Austin, do you know where I'm from? 
I mean, that's true. Fair enough. You're thinking of the alligator. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am literally from the bayou, so... I thought it was the lightning bug, but okay. Yeah. So, that's my number two. I think it's great. I, I don't love uh, Prince Nadine, the frog. Um... I think, like, just his personality in general, if I, like, met him in person, I'd want to throw a pie at him. But he's not the whole movie. He's not what it's about, so it's fine. Um, so, yeah. Talk about a movie with some dark imagery. Some of the stuff with the villain, there's some dark pictures there. I, I <laughs> would argue that Dr. Fassier is the best Disney villain. I mean, that's um, a, I mean, it's a flawed argument, but sure. I, okay, maybe, but um, I absolutely Did love him. Did he have an him. army of characters goose-stepping behind him? I don't think I, so. I, I, <laughs> um, you don't know, because his friends are from the other side, so. I do not remember a song where ghosts were goose-stepping behind him, all uh, right? It didn't happen. Like, while he's singing, what? While he's singing that, um, I got friends on the other side song. There's like six ghosts marching behind him. At least I didn't. There wasn't an I army like there was for my boy Scar. So what? What qualifies an army? How many people do you need for it to be an army? At least like twenty. You just said there were six. <laughs> well. <laughs> There were I just, hundreds I, of hyenas I, in that shot, and pretty much I think only that the Bible shot. Says a strand of three, okay, three people. That's all it takes to be an army, okay? I I I would love to know what war you think you're winning. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. So what's your number two? Oh, my number two. My number two. My number two. It's a classic. It's you know. The last great, you know, what was the stupid, what was the quote from earlier? Yeah, this is the, you know, the last uh, great animated trip before we get to. Oh, it's Aladdin. I see. It's Aladdin. I... Yeah, it's Aladdin. <laughs> it's Aladdin. Yeah. How can you not love Aladdin? Everything about Aladdin. Really? It's got a great story. It's got a great cast. You got, you got the one, the only Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> He's awesome. And then I mean, you got you got some. We could say that. You got some 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 comedian. I don't know. You may have heard of him. His name's Robin Williams. He's kind of not that yeah. big a deal. Um, no, no, no. I okay. actually got in a it's fight with someone once about Aladdin because I said this was Robin Williams' best role, and they got mad at me because they apparently look at, you know, animation can't be someone's best role, and I was just offended because I was like. I mean, I'm not saying, like, Robin Williams, amazing actor. I'm not saying this is by any means his only good role, but this is, this is Robin Williams. This is, this movie is just a Robin Williams stand-up bit toned down. Exactly, yeah. Animated around I would say it. that he makes the whole movie, almost. So. And most importantly in the casting, we have the one, the only, the Steve. DJ Tanner's boyfriend from Full House. Playing our boy Aladdin, cause yeah, that's some Disney synergy there. <laughs> Wait a second, how did I not know that? I, I like I get, no, I knew there was that, a whole episode never of that. Full House no. about this. Yeah, no, I guess I like knew that, but I guess I hadn't made that connection in my mind. Wow. That's wow. my fun fact about Aladdin. But back to why Aladdin's good. Forget the the jokes I made about the cast. One first main reason why this movie's good. Robin Williams. Second, the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> those two together, you don't need anything else. If they just had those, him talking the whole movie, I'd watch it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I would watch that too. That'd be pretty great. Also, like, I, I don't, I like Aladdin so much, the soundtrack and just, like, the movie, that I enjoyed the live action. Was it Robin mm -hmm. Williams? No. But was it good? I wasn't yeah. willing to watch it because I I won't I haven't watched I also haven't watched Lion King even though I gave a scathing review five minutes ago I haven't seen the movie I can just tell with my eyes that it was a lame cash grab. Oh, <laughs> oh wow well, okay okay I'm sure you know after that comment Disney Plus will Disney, be recruiting you. Give me your money. 
I'll, I'll still, yeah. <laughs> if you you pay me, I'll change my opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I can see I can see that I'm you're a man of low guys. morals. <laughs> I can vouch for that. He is a man of low morals. <laughs> wow, thanks, Lizzie. But yeah, Aladdin, it's a great movie. It 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 deserves to be number one on a list. It didn't make my number one. We'll find out why in a little bit. But first, let's find out what made Lizzie's number one. Okay, I thought so long and hard about this. I honestly probably should not have put this much effort and thought into my top spot. But I did and I don't regret it. Well, good. This is a um, this is a very I... serious podcast, Lizzie. What do you mean? <laughs> and you probably no. shouldn't have. I'm offended. First you insult oh, my viewers no. and say they are heartless. Now <laughs> you say you put too much time into the podcast. I see how it is. I see where your well, heart lies. I mean, I do have a child, a business, <laughs> a lot of other responsibilities, but and I, I did spend hours trying to decide what my first one would be. <laughs> no, I guess, maybe that's a little too much time. Yeah, yeah. I am I'm an incredibly indecisive person and also like I, I'm a little bit of a people pleaser, so I felt like I was making the other movies feel bad by not putting them in the first place. And then I realized I don't care. So <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk, that's my life. Okay. So my first spot, um, I put Lilo and Stitch. And just all around the storyline, the animations, I think it's just a great movie. Um Terrible soundtrack. Who's Elvis? Never heard of him. What? <laughs> that could have played a part into it. I like Elvis. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. Should be. Um, oh, I don't well, have a problem with Elvis. I just... Anyway, I like the the relationship between Lilo and her sister, I think, was incredibly relatable. And, um, what just, kind of fan are you calling her her sister? How dare you disrespect Nani like that? Well, sorry, I'm kind of, I don't know, who hasn't seen these movies? Like, are you, do you live under a rock? I don't know, I'm trying to Stop open. insulting my audience! <laughs> do you know a single person who hasn't watched Lilo and Stitch? Just... Probably, because it's a mid-2000s animated movie. None of us should have technically been watching it. We were all a little older than we needed to be to technically watch it when this came out. What? I watched this, like, last week. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, mean, I might have been, like, eight or nine. I might have been on, like, the cutoff. But there are definitely yeah. people who might be a little bit older than me who didn't get around to watching Lilo and Stitch because it isn't part of what they grew up with. And here's the thing. Well, they're missing out because I love Lilo and Stitch. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend, you know, tomorrow afternoon you just sit down with some snacks and you just uh, watch it, the whole thing. It's wonderful. Um, I love Lilo and Stitch because I I'm, I'm a, I grew up in Hawaii for four years, so like I have a special there's a special pull in my heart for Lilo and Stitch because of that Hawaiian you know Hawaiian island life there. It's it's great. I also love Lilo. I feel like Lilo is like also Stitch. They're both very relatable. I don't know. You know she's kicking and biting and. Not this perfect all-around princess like all the Disney princesses. Don't get me wrong, I love the she's, Disney She's Disney literally princesses. not a Disney princess, so there's that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, but, I don't know, I feel like when you think Disney, you think, like, Cinderella, Snow White. No, yeah. give me Lilo and Stitch. Like, they're wonderful. Also, Stitch is just incredible. Like, I, I want to real quick, because I, I have the movie poster in front of me for when it was coming out. <laughs> I love the marketing that the, for this movie when it was coming out it was like all he like stitch was showing up in like other classic disney scenes and just being oh, yeah. chaotic and making everyone angry <laughs> yeah and just like basically like this is not your normal disney movie <laughs> was... exactly and that is it's just it's great for that reason it's just Different. Uh, it's uh, different from what Disney put out, and I don't know. It's it's just a good time. You should go watch it if you yeah, haven't if seen you, it. Somehow you haven't seen Lilo Stitch. Crawl out from under the rock Lizzie thinks you live under, <laughs> and go watch it. And you know, don't stop there, because I think Lilo and Stitch is one of the best like franchises Disney has. Yeah, it gets yes. the quality goes down after Lilo and Stitch. I'm not gonna lie, but when it comes to like their straight to DVD <laughs> Disney movies, Lilo and Stitch has like the best sequels. Like. 
Little Mermaid 2 sucks. I can't believe Little Mermaid didn't make either of our lists as I just said Little Mermaid 2 sucks. I just realized that neither of us gave a sh- Ooh. Literally one of my favorite Disney movies, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna lie, it's not that great of a movie, so. But yeah. I love it, but... <laughs> does it, does Mer- it belong Little in the top Little Mermaid five? 2 sucks. L- yes, it absolutely is. Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch has a glitch, great. Stitch the movie... Yeah, it was a pilot for the show, but it was a good pilot. Lilo and Stitch, the animated series. Good show! Lilo and Stitch, peak Disney franchise. Yes. Sure, sure. So, what's your number one? My number one? And, and I don't think it could be uh, Lilo and Stitch. Can, what is no, it? no, I, I, it, I didn't go with Lilo and Stitch. I went with Hercules. Oh, that's a Hercules, good one. Just, oh, the movie. I mean, it's just, it's... It's it's a it's a classic. I mean, it's this is like yeah. this is peak Disney Renaissance. Like you got, you got just the iconic characters in this. Like you got you know you got some fun comedy with your you know your pains and your panics, your Pegasus, your Phils. You got you got some great stuff there. You got random side characters that I don't remember their name because who cares? There's there's so many other little side characters. You got Hercules who's just kind of buff and does things. He's kind of the worst character in the whole thing. He's the most boring character in it. I, I will say that. It, <laughs> it's kind of... That kind of happens with a lot of Disney movies, so I feel like a lot of times the sidekick ends up being, like, better. But that's the, okay. That's this okay. movie has literally the best love interest in any Disney movie. None of the I, Disney, I, prince, Disney princes can come close to Megara. Megara is no. peak. She has probably the best Disney song, period, going back to soundtracks, because unlike Lizzie, they're important to me. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry. That was on Baby Duty's name. All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I might cut that. Probably not. I'm lazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so yeah, Meg, the best song in all of Disney. My favorite Disney song is I won't say in parentheses I'm in love. That song that song is amazing. That is my favorite Disney song, period. This is one of the few, you know, if they made this into a live action movie, I'd hate it, but I'd go see it because I'd have to see what they did to my baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, yeah, I would definitely watch it. Um, also, it depends on the casting. They'd have to cast well. They'd have to cast well. There's yeah, only like a couple people who could play Meg. I think Vanessa Hudgens would play a great Meg. That's a whole different topic. I, for a whole I different really discussion. think that. I, I, yeah, I, I was going to say. I feel that way after watching um, Vanessa Hudgens when she played Rizzo in Grease Live. <laughs> and she did Rizzo's one song towards the end of the Grease. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, she's it. I want her to be Meg. That's a oh. little side note into Austin's brain, but Hercules, yeah, yeah. great movie. It's funny throughout. You got a lot of you know little jokes about you know Greek mythology, which is always fun because Greek yeah, mythology that's... is so crazy on its own. It's really easy to make jokes about. There's some great jokes. There's jokes that probably shouldn't have made it into a Disney movie. There's there's a joke about. But they have to leave something in there for. You they know. made a joke about Oedipus. And I don't know if there needed to be an Oedipus joke in a kid's movie. <laughs> Maybe there should have been a line that you don't cross. And that might but have been it. I feel certain I feel certain they had a line. Um, it was just like written in sand and they just kept inching it up. So. That's <laughs> fair, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so. that's, that's the list. That's the Kentucky Route 5 yeah. list. We, oh, wrong one. I clicked the wrong scene, and our faces went completely away there. My bad. All right. Know. Well, Lizzie, thank you for joining us today on this podcast. You know, yeah. what? Where thank can you, you know? For me. Where can people find you? What do you? Who are you? What uh, do you do? Who am I? Are we all asking that question though? Um. So after that existential crisis we just had there for a second. Um, so you can find me on Facebook, Instagram. I'm not going to lie. I suck at using Instagram. But I actually run a small business. It's called L.E. Fonts Creations. It's spelled L-E-O-N-T-S, like elephants. Um, and I just sell um, hand-designed and 
custom made shirts, home decor, um, tote bags, earrings, tons of stuff. So just go check it out. Great prices. I ship everywhere. Um, so yeah, just hit me up if you need some. I love making things. Um, and you get cute little stickers in there as freebies, and that's fun. Who doesn't love free stickers? They're like all the rage. I hate free stickers with a passion. <sighs> Listen, Austin. I wasn't talking to you. Also, where was my free sticker when I made a digital purchase? What the crap, Lizzie? <laughs> I will mail that out this week, okay? <laughs> um, um, thank you for joining me, Lizzie. Thank yeah. you to our wonderful viewers. Thank you for tuning in this week. Next week, Chris will be back. If you hated Lizzie, I get it. I'm just kidding. Lizzie's great. She's a great guest. Me but too. if you know, if you want, if you want your normal, if you don't like change, don't worry. Chris is back next week. So we'll be back next week with more Kentucky Route Five. What are we gonna talk about next week? Who knows? Maybe next week you could actually have some Kentucky Fried Chicken. That would make it like, like that would take it from a solid nine to like. 13 out of 10. With viewers? Because we only get like 10 viewers, so 13 viewers would be great. <laughs> Whew, that's oh, some okay. great things you're, you're teasing there. But thank you for watching. <laughs> Tune in next week. <laughs>